Great to see my fellow traders stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday, September 27th. Tomorrow being Thursday, I've got a live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the same time the market's closing down, I'm going on. Me and Taylor, my co-host, we're there for an hour talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share hot stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share hot stocks with us. Now, we're there for only an hour. If you really want to get your ticker looked at, drop it in early. I do put a placeholder before 4 o'clock. You can drop your ticker in. That'll actually give me time to go over it, and I can give you more bang for your buck. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. To do that, I got to go hunting. Every day I'm looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I start my hunt looking at the charts. I don't bother with the news of the filings, not initially. I go looking for a chart that has heat. I want to see volume coming in. I want to see a breakout setup or a surge that just won't quit. Something that makes me say that's a hot chart. When I got a chart that has heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. When I find one, I got myself a hot penny stock. I accumulate a bunch of these each day and then I throw a whole bunch aside so I got a few to share with you. I've only got so much time and I hate doing that. Yesterday I had a stock I wanted to share with you, but I bumped it to share three others with you and by golly if it isn't taking off right now. So we are going to talk about it today. But the first one I want to share with you is VISM, ticker V-I-S-M. This is VISM Technologies. Yeah, you do remember. We just looked at this September 18th, about 10 days ago. She was in the midst of an atypical breakout and was doing it, but she didn't complete it. She came back down just a smidge and she is doing it now. So if you had kept this on your watch list, like I said, you'd be taking the gain she had today. Vism finished today just under two cents with 50% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see a verified profile. We would like to see that. It's validated information. You don't get any of that with a pink. So it's not a deal breaker, but we would like to see that sooner rather than later. They've also got independent directors listed here. Now, I've only found one reason that you ever list independent directors here, and that is when you have plans to uplist. Now, I haven't read anything, but they are listed here. So, so what does Vism Technologies do? Well, they tell us here that Vism Technologies is a provider of cybersecurity visualization data, analytics, and automation. The company is focused on digital risk management, cybersecurity and technology services for network security, cloud, mobility solutions, and the Internet of Things. The company provides cybersecurity technology solutions, tools, and services to support commercial enterprises and government's ability to protect their data. It's true context technology developed by MITRE Corporation and powered by SciGraph, provides visualization, advanced cyber monitoring intelligence, analytics, and automation to help reduce risk, simplify cybersecurity, and deliver better security outcomes. Its solutions are used in various sectors, such as the financial sector, healthcare, and others. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yes, we got a nice jump, over 300%, going from just under a half a million shares to just over 1.5 million shares. Looking at the share structure, outstanding share count, they tell us, is just about 46 million. If we can trust these numbers, the insiders, the management, own about 16 million of them. Subtract that 16 million from that 45 million, and that gives you your float. And it should be roughly 30 million if these numbers are right, and 30 million is not a bad float. Financials for Vism. Well, there really isn't a lot to look at over here. Annually, uh, they did $25,000 in 2021. We got to put three zeros behind that, thank goodness. 2022, though, they had nothing. Quarterly, eh, we have absolutely nothing here. And that's why the news is so important. It is talking about millions and millions of dollars that they are coming into. 
taking a look at the disclosures for the company. We've got 18K here, and I do believe that this relates to the news. Yes, the material definitive agreement. So let's just jump on over to that news. So we've got two pieces of news here that are current that we need to take a look at. Vism Technology receives a letter of intent from Sebastian Institute of Technology for major projects in Costa de Lavoure. Now we could jump into that, but they actually give us more information in this letter here, which is a shareholder's letter that came out yesterday. So going right down to the information. Now more than ever, Africa is seeking digital solutions to boost productivity and spur development. The continent lags behind much of the world in terms of fiber network and broadband connectivity, spectrum allocation, and data center capabilities. According to the World Bank, achieving universal high-quality internet access across Africa necessitates a staggering $100 billion investment. 80% of this investment is earmarked for essential infrastructure to establish and maintain broadband networks. Related to this digital transformation initiative, our partner, Sebastian Institute of Technology, has been awarded projects valued in excess of $1 billion in more than 10 countries in Africa. Sebastian has entrusted VISM to deliver project management, engineering, and cybersecurity services. The projects in Cote d'Ivoire will be the first to begin with the contract value of the services to be delivered by VISM expected to be over $50 million. The contract value from work to be performed in these follow-on countries is estimated to be in excess of an additional $50 million. It is important to note that the financing has already been secured for these Sebastian-related projects and is derived from multiple governmental institutions devoted to funding the digital transformation of the African continent. So they're going from <laughs> no money, really, to millions. They're talking $50 million up front, $50 million in the back door. And they say that this company they're partnered with, Sebastian Institute, has already been awarded projects in excess of $1 billion. So I'm expecting money to be coming in now. This is fresh news and the chart is hot. She wanted to break out when we looked at it about 10 days ago. Right now she is breaking out. Let's go take a look at that breakout. Charting, my favorite part of DD. We're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that was free too. So we are looking at ticker VISM, VISM Technologies. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. This blue line back here represents the last time we looked at it. That was September 18th. And this white bubble represents the high over the last six months. This hit in January, it is at 64 cents. Are you ready for the low? It hit in July at 0061. Now, if I'm doing the math accurately, that is over a hundred thousand percent drop folks simply unbelievable now it was right in this area here that she started to bring in her volume it started to grow and get real strong and this is when we looked at her the volume was strong she had bounced off of the 200 haul got over a 50 broke the 200 bounced and came back up it looked like a perfect breakout it just didn't happen well now the 200 is flatter she came down a wee bit snuggled right up underneath that 200 and these last two days she's taken off yesterday she got on top of the 200 and today she is launching off of it our oscillators are all looking great although i can't see that macd let's zoom in on that macd that's looking better so you can see everything is pushing up right now or on fire great four hour chart coming down to our 20 day one hour so she was on top of the 200, took a rubber ball bounce here. You know, a rubber ball goes under the water and comes right back up. That's all she did. Tagged this low and came right back up with enthusiasm. She wanted to be there. Jumped again, started to climb. Came down to the 50-day SMA. Did not come down to the 200. She's bounced off of that and she's got bigger bars climbing faster. She hit a high today of about two and a half cents and she's fallen back to right around two cents and she is above the nine-day SMA. And all the other SMAs look wonderful. 
Our osculators are still hot and growing. Every single one of them is pushing up. You can't go wrong if your osculators are all pointing up. Five day, five minute chart. So five days ago, we had a low of 1.2 cents. She's been hanging around this support resistance right here. She's been banging on it. And then today she just broke away. She was under it, came up on top and took off. She jumped today from 1.3 cents up to 2.5 cents. And we're right up over here underneath the 20, on top of the nine, on top of the 50. Not bad position. Now, the only thing that concerns me at the very last moment here is that bloody 200-day SMA that just came on the screen. I see in a lot of cases when a new SMA comes on the board, the price goes right to it. doesn't matter if that new SMA is above the price or below the price. The price goes to it. Sometimes it sticks there. Sometimes it just tags it and goes back to what it was doing. I don't see any indication of that happening yet. Hopefully, it won't happen tomorrow. Our osculators look good. You can see we're on a solid bounce off of this 50. We got a bounce right there on our PPO, percentage price osculator. You read it just the same as the MACD. That is bounced off the signal line and is coming up looking like it's going to cross over. And our RSI is climbing strong right now. Folks, we're talking about a company that is making virtually no money. There's nothing there to talk about. And they're going to go to 50 million on the base contract, another 50 million on the back end of the contract. And the company they're partnered with has been awarded a contract worth a billion dollars. I think this is a company that's going to be coming into money. And from zero to 50 million, that's a huge leap. That's going to be exciting. So I would put Vism on my watch list. If it wasn't there the last time I showed this to you, it better be there now. And don't take them off after a couple of days. Leave them there for a while. It doesn't cost you anything. Rent is free. VISM. I'm watching it. You should too. The next stock we're taking a look at <sighs> caught me off guard today. This is Near Intelligence, ticker NIR. I looked at this in the morning. She was having a great morning. She had a lot of volume coming in. The price was surging. She's got all kinds of news this quarter. Business is just growing and growing. I thought this is a stock I've got to share with them. So I start to make my video and refresh myself and all the information. I go look at the chart and it's like, oh my God, what happened? It fell, folks. It bottomed out. It didn't come down any lower than where it started. She went from 150% gains all the way down to about 13.5% gains. But this is a token sign. There is no bad news on the table. All the good news we're going to look at is still there. She showed a lot of enthusiasm today. The price surged hard and the volume came in and she came back down higher than where she started. I think it's still worth looking at. NIR finished today just under 31 cents at 30.75 and just about 13.5% gains. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free, no transaction fees with major exchange stocks, and you're going to be able to trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So, what is this company all about? Well, they tell us over here that NEAR is a global privacy-led data intelligence platform that curates one of the world's largest sources of intelligence on people and places. NEAR's patented technology analyzes data to deliver insights on approximately 1.6 billion unique user IDs across 70 million points of interest in more than 44 countries. With NEAR's three-pillared approach, high-quality data, privacy, and AI, operational and marketing leaders are empowered with solutions to successfully engage and grow their businesses at scale. With a presence in Pasadena, San Francisco, Paris, Bangalore, Singapore, Sydney, and Tokyo, NEAR services enterprises in a diverse spectrum of industries including retail, real estate, restaurant, travel, and tourism, telecom, media, and much, much more. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow. Whew. I wonder if this came in the morning or the afternoon. My God. She jumped from 1.8 million up to 84 million shares today. A lot of attention was paid to this stock. Share structure for NIR. 
Well, the only thing they tell us here is the outstanding share count, which is roughly 52 million. Our float won't be any higher than that, and we pray it's considerably less. Though, even if it is 50 million, that's not a bad float. Financials for NIR. We have nothing on the annual, and we do have some on the quarterly. La la. And look, it's a big jump, folks. They went from nothing straight to the millions. The first quarter, they did 15.5 million. Second quarter, 17.7 million. You're looking at $33 million there in the first half of the year. They're doing good business. And this last quarter, as I said, there's been a lot of news about doing more and more business. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We have an 8K here. I can't recall what this one was about. Oh, yes, I do. They received notice from the NASDAQ that they have not been compliant with the minimum bid price requirement. You cannot be under a dollar for too long on the major exchanges. If you don't get your price up over a dollar in a certain amount of time, they will throw you off of the major exchange right down to the OTC. And then you got to struggle to get back up. Nobody likes that. Well, they have been given a deadline of March 18th, 2024. That's how long they've got to get this price up over a dollar. They have to get it over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. It has to close over a dollar. Is there anything else there we need to look at? Oh, we've got a Form 4 here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management, acquire or dispose of shares. Now, we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. And you can look right here. There'll normally be a, right here. We've got a number, but we don't have a price. Without a price, we know that they didn't pay for them. They got them in some other way. And though that's a good thing, it's really not what we're looking for. And then you've got Form 3 here. Form 3 tells you how many shares somebody on the management has, if you're interested. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So we're only going to headline this news because they've got quite a lot of it here. And I have gone back to June 30th. Next Level Partnership, Near Intelligence, Aldi France, and Co-Spirit Media Redefine Personalized Marketing. Earth Vision empowers clients with Near Intelligence Platform, driving optimal market strategies and closing deals. Top global quick service restaurants supercharge their success with Near Intelligence Platform. Gen Z and Millennials twice as likely to be omni-channel shoppers according to New Near Intelligent Report. This is an AI program that analyzes anything you want it to analyze. It'll help you with business decisions. It'll help you with how to deal with your customers. It does all sorts of stuff. The company appoints Jay Angelo as Chief Privacy Officer to further strengthen its commitment to protecting user privacy. And the most current piece of news, leading global commercial real estate companies representing over $200 billion in all, rely on near intelligence for real estate analytics. You've got everybody relying on A right now and this company's getting a reputation. And more than that, they're getting money. They just started making money this year and so far they are over $30 million. And you can see how much business has been coming in in the last quarter. So what do you think the next financial is gonna be? Now, as I said, the chart was hot and then it was not, but we're gonna go take a look at it anyways. You don't want to be too far away when you're looking at near intelligence. <laughs> this is ticker NIR. This is a six month, four hour view. And honestly, we can't go any further back because that's all the chart the stock has. It looks to me it was a SPAC merger deal. The price is here at $10 and SPACs are always at 10 bucks. And it was March 24th that this ticker came live. She jumped from $10 to $22 and then fell abruptly down to the $2.30 zone. And she's been dribbling downhill ever since then. And it was on September 20th, she hit her absolute low of 19 cents. She bounced up, laid on top of this 200 day haul for many a days. And you're going, 200 day haul? What's that? H-U-L-L. -L. A lot of people don't use this, I do. And here recently, a lot of stocks have been paying heed to it. The 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, and then puts more credence on the current prices. 
So what you end up with is kind of like a 200 day SMA that's current. This is an older one. This is a current one. Well, she just laid on that for many a days. And then today, I don't know why she sparked all this volume came in first half of the day and the back half of the day. She jumped here from 25 cents going up to 67 cents, 150% gain, breaking that 200 and falling back. She did not come any lower than where she started, so I like that. She is at 30 cents right now, which is right up underneath the 50-day SMA. Now, that was a strong move. It changed all of our oscillators. They were all in the negative zone. They're all in the positive zone now. Our PPO is now on top of that pink line. Our MACD has gotten over the signal line. It has fallen, but it's still over it. And our RSI, well, that's dropped. She came from 47 all the way up to 77 and fell back to 48 and is going sideways right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So that's definitely a downhill trend, no doubt about it, underneath the 200, dipped down to that 19 cents, came up still under the 200, and today was the only day she has had any serious breakout. She got over that 200, came back down, and let's see where the price sits here. She's right up underneath the 200 here. Our 200-day haul has just turned up real strong. You can see that. Osculators, they were ripping but now they're dipping, as you would expect with all those red bars. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. You ready for this? Boom! Look at that, folks. I'm just going to go straight into that area. She was doing exactly the same thing she does every day for, well, how long was that? Jeez, that was up until noon. She wasn't doing anything. So the news or whatever <laughs> sparked this took off at noon from that 25 cents and by uh, 35 minutes later, she had hit this high. So in 35 minutes, there was 150% gains that she could have taken and now she's fallen all the way back underneath the 200-day SMA and she's starting to turn around right now. And looking at our osculators, you can see that. We got this big blue bowl, which looks like it's about ready to come up over top of that pink line. Same thing with our MACD. It needs to get up over this signal line right here. It is bowling up and about ready to cross. Our RSI is very weak right now. Looks like it's at 40 and it's actually pushing down right now. Did we just get another mark there? Maybe. In either case, folks, I think NIR is going to generate a lot of money. I think the next financial is going to be really big. If you can get into this at a good price, I think it would be a good deal. Right now, she is showing that she can move this stock when she wants to. She can also pull it back real quick. So if you get into this and she takes a run, don't be afraid to take those gains as quick as you can. NIR. I think she still has some surprises for us. God, I hope we're not too late on this one. This is Cirrus XM Holdings, ticker S-I-R-I. This is the one I chose to pass on yesterday. I had a bunch of stocks that I had found that had mergers and acquisitions, and I could only share three, so I had to bump a bunch of them. This was one of them I bumped. She's got a merger sitting on the table right now, a very nice one. The only reason I passed on it was because of the charts. Yesterday when the news came out, she immediately dropped 50 cents from $4 down to $3.50. And it's like, oh, that doesn't look good. But then she ripped back up and then she fell. And it's like, you look a bit wonky to me. So I just didn't want to talk about it because of the charts. Well, she's got all that wonkiness fixed. And today she was taking gains and it looks like she's going to continue to grow. So Sarah's finished today at $4.07 with 4.9% gains. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this one for free. Build those holdings up without any extra expense. Now, in case you're not familiar with Cirrus, you've been living under a rock because they've had streaming music way before anybody else did. Cirrus XM Holdings is an audio entertainment company. The company operates through two segments, Cirrus XM and Pandora. Cirrus XM segment features music, sports, entertainment, comedy, talk, news, traffic, and weather channels, and other content, as well as podcasts and infotainment services in the United States on a subscription basis. But of course, they've got a premier service content that bundles 
which include live curated music, certain exclusive and on-demand programming. They also have Pandora, which operates a music and comedy podcast streaming platform, offering a personalized experience for each listener wherever and whenever they want to listen, whether through mobile devices, car speakers, or connected devices in your hand or at home. It has a portfolio of audio businesses, including its flagship subscription entertainment service, Cirrus XM, the ad-supported and premium music streaming services of Pandora, a podcast network, an advertising sales group, SXM Media, and a suite of advertising technology solutions. They're doing a lot, folks, and you're going to see how much they're doing by how much money they're making. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yeah, look at that increase. It's only about a 100% increase, but it's on millions. That's when it really counts, right? We're going from 14 million up to 29 million shares today. Share structure for Siri. Oh my God, are you kidding? A stock on the NASDAQ has 3.8 billion shares. Holy cow. Now, I don't know what the float is. It could be a lot less than that. Or it could be virtually that. So there is no telling. In either case, the stock is climbing. We'll take the gains, we'll get out, and we won't worry about investor shareholder value. Financials for Siri. You ready for this? We don't see a lot of financials in penny stocks like this. Look at that, folks. Remember those three zeros? We got to add behind these numbers. At the end of 2022, Cirrus did $9 billion worth of business, just supplying music for people to listen to. What an easy business. And they got to keep $4.5 billion of that money. Do they give us any quarterly information? They do. Oh my God. We got three zeros here too. The last quarter, they did $2.2 billion dollars. Oh my God, folks, they do that regularly. That's what subscription-based businesses do for you. You can count on the same revenues coming in regularly. Wow. All right, should we do it? Yes, let's take a look at that balance sheet. I can't help myself. So what do they got? In the bank, they have got $51 million. Whoa, but they got $700 million still yet to come in. It's due them. They're just waiting for it to come in. So they got virtually a million dollars in cash up there. Total, to, no, excuse me, a billion dollars. That's what I said, right? Billion, million. <laughs> total assets, wow. Total assets, they have over $10 billion. And liabilities, whoo, they got a lot of those too. $13 billion dollars but that's okay. They got a lot of money. They're doing fine. Everybody loves their music. Ain't nobody going to give that up. Disclosure for Siri. We've got an 8K here. I know what that goes to, the news, which we're going to jump in here in a minute. I did want to share this with you. Do I have this already opened up here? Uh, let me see if it's up here. Yes, right here. This is the 13, the SC13D. These are filed whenever somebody buys so many shares, they become basically a partner. They own percentage of the company. Well, the news relates to this group right here, Liberty Media Corporation. These are the people that want to merge with this company. Well, look how many shares they got. 3.2 billion shares. They just got themselves 83.4% of the company. So I'm thinking the deal is probably going to go through since they've already made the purchase. So let's jump on into that news then. So the news isn't actually a news press, at least not over here. I actually got this inside the filing, inside the 8K. I forgot. <laughs> so they tell us here, Cirrus XM Holdings has received a non-binding proposal from Liberty Media Corporation regarding a potential transaction involving the company. Now, they get into how they're going to do this. It's a bit tricky. They're going to separate some assets out of the companies and bring them together and create a whole new entity. And that's going to be their new business. I don't know if it's going to be a whole new ticker or what. They're not real clear here. There's not a lot of information. 
I would love to give you more information about this merger. There just isn't anything here. They just say they're tearing apart the company and bringing all these certain assets together. And as they say, as a result of which the holders of Liberty, Cyrus XM tracking stock and Cirrus XM common stock would all hold one class of common stock of the combined company. Right? Kind of tough to explain. All we know is it's a massive but as a matter of fact, I was doing a Google search and you know, when you have these huge, big mergers, you have to cross these hurdles or people who want to block them and they say, no, you can't merge. You'll be too big. Well, they expect there could be some of that problems with this because it is that big of a merger in case that means anything to you. All right, let's go take a look at that chart now that she straightened herself out. Let's take a look at Cirrus XM, ticker SIRI. We got a six month, four hour view here with a low bubble in May of $3.32. A real nice surge up to $8.14 in July. Real short lived. Fell hard and fast down to the 200, crushed that. And she fell right down here to a low yesterday of $3.45. Now, I was watching this. I saw the news come out and that's when I seen her fall. And I said, how strange is that? I even told my brother-in-law about it. I said, I don't get this. Well, as soon as it fell, I threw up my Fibonacci. Because to me, it's worth getting into when she gets to the halfway point. Take the full spectrum of the drop, draw the Fibonacci in there and find the middle. Well, I was waiting for her to get up to the top. Well, the back half of the day, she finally did it. Once she got up there, she started climbing. That's why the halfway point is real important. The bottom half is negative. The top half is positive. Once she got into the positive zone, she started climbing. Looking at our oscillators, looks like our PPO is just in about recovery right now. She's about ready to cross that pink line. Our MACD, let's see if we can focus in on that. Oh yeah, we just had a crossover today and she is now coming up to the signal line. And our RSI is climbing. It, phew, that's been climbing for two days. It was way underneath 30. Oh my God. She was all the way down here at 17 and she has picked herself up to 54. That's not bad. And these last two days, the volume has been stronger for the days before. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. So she was definitely on a downhill trend here trying to get over that 200, but when it's that steep, you're not going to be able to stand on it. Yeah, you can crest over it like a wave, but you're going to come back underwater. She fell down here. She's bounced off of that the hard way, and she is right up underneath that 200 right now, looking very strong. Even after market hours, she is continuing her growth. Look at this, folks. Every one of these bars has got a higher low than the one before it. That's exactly what you're looking for for entry. Osculators are outstanding. We have our PPO crossover climbing up. Now you see that mirror image, you see that red line coming down and you see that spread. That is a pattern I look for. This is my ADX. ADX tells you about your trend continuation. Notice that it started climbing right here. When did that line start falling? As soon as that started climbing. This changes directions every time your trend changes. Now it could be going up right now, even though that's going up. The point here is this is an easy pattern to see. That spread is a guarantee 100% that your price is rising. So as long as I see this ADX and my PPO getting further and further apart, I know I'm on the right track. And as soon as either one of these changes direction, my trend has stopped. I may want to consider an exit. Our MACD has already crossed the signal line and growing. Our bars have gotten lighter green, but everything does look good. And our RSI is now up at 63. Now you see these blue lines I have down here in my RSI. I actually draw supports and resistances down here. I put this on a long stretch, especially on the five minute, and I will find where it keeps hitting its head and I'll draw a line there. And then I find the bottom where it keeps hitting. And I find that static where it lives in the center. And when it goes below that living area, it's bad. When it goes above that living area, it's really good. And that's when I know when to get in and get out. This helps me to know when the stock is moving the strongest. So I do use supports and resistances down here, which I've been doing for about three months now and makes a lot of difference in my trade. 
So we've got three luscious stocks here, folks. They all have decent charts. They all have reasons to run. What they need is some more due diligence. I try to share enough information with you so when you look at it, you can go, well, yeah, I can see that. But if you're going to put your money on it, you need more than what I just share with you, honestly. So please do your own due diligence. It's never, ever going to hurt. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.